Okay, today I want to tie a blue quill. Um, it's a very useful fly, I would say all over the country, and no artificial fly is tied in greater variety of dressings and styles. Uh, it's different in every part of the country. It's different in England, Wales, Ireland, Scotland. Wherever it is used, it's a prime taker of trout. I've even had large chub on it when fished it dry. Um, it can be fished wet or dry. It's mostly tied without wings. If you want to tie it without wings, just, just leave them off. Uh, it's called a blue quill, but you may notice on this, I've, um, I've got a reddish body on it, and I've simply uh, run a, a felt marker pen <coughs> down, a, down a stripped quill from the peacock eye. Uh, looking at natural flies down the river, they seem to have a maroonish sort of body. But uh, anyhow, it's called a blue quill. Uh, the hackle is a sort of bluey grey, the tail is bluey grey. Now the difference with this particular one I'm showing you, this has got, this, the wings have been cut from wing cutters, using a wing cutter out of a hen wing, a hen cape. Now, um, hackles from a hen cape. Now just, just to show you a different way, I'm going to use some uh, wing feather wing slips. I do both and it doesn't matter which what, what you use. I'm going to use a maroon silk and um, the hook I'm using is a size 12 and normally tied on a 14 but I think it may come out clearer on the uh, demonstration here. It's a Camazan 405 size 12 but I normally use a B440. Okay, uh, start here Take the silk down, make it secure, and I'll cut off the silk there. And I just go to there, then I'll come back up, because I'm making a sort of double foundation here where I'm going to fit the wings. Now the wings have come from a mallard mallard primary feathers. I've taken off two slips here. I'll show you in a mo. I'm just going to get them lined up in my hand. Here they are. Just bear with me while I line up the tips. Not too difficult. Try to get them much the same length. About there, like that. Look at the length. Try to measure up what you've got. And now do the pinch and loop, pinching it hard and drawing them down. See the tips come up? And I give a few just to make the wings secure like that. When they're like that, I take these fibers back behind the wings. Get him to stand up. One of the reasons I do this is to keep this area in the front here where the hackles are going. It keeps them pretty um, clear. Okay, that's the wings on. Now I'm going to remove those uh, stubs, those butts. The way I do that is I simply just part them. I see I've got a loose one there which I'll remove. And I put the scissors down in between. And I cut them off to give a bit of a taper in the body. And I now take the silk down towards the bend where I'm going to tie in the tail. Still putting the foundation on. I'm going to flatten this out a bit more because this is going to have a quill body and I need it to be fairly 
don't want it too lumpy okay there I'm going to tie in the tail and the tail is coming from um, a cock feather a cock hackle just tear off some of the fibers first of all I'll pull them down to level them up hope you can see that tear them off the tips are pretty much level there measure up where I want them and I tie them in on the side like that I have a quick look yeah it's a little bit too long so I just move up a touch tie them down like that that's fine that's fine and now I'll give one wind underneath just to make the tail splay out a little bit that's fine now I'm going to remove these waste bits of the tail again I'm sort of trying to cut them so we don't leave any lumps right the quill I was talking to you about from the peacock eye and I, it's stripped uh, people strip them by putting them on a piece of glass and using a rubber or, or even a hard formica surface I leave them attached to the eye and I dip them in a source of um, uh, bleach they're all attached to the stem and then I hold them run them under a cold tap they're only in the bleach two or three minutes run them under a cold tap and I run my f nail down them and they're all stripped and attached to the ta to the feather and I can use them as I want to right I'm just tying this quill on here like this remove the waste now the quill is a bit fiddly to put on it's uh, I'm hoping this one is going to be long enough because I, uh, I want to put on the wide part of it which is marked okay before I do that I'm just going to put on a touch of varnish just to help it to stick not a lot the body doesn't it only comes up to the thorax area because I am going to put a thorax on right now just temporarily I'll put my silk up the front and I'll try to wind this quill I'm hoping you can see the quill is striped lengthways long ways that gives a sort of marking on it which um, gives a sort of a segmented body you can see the wing distorting a little bit that doesn't matter we'll come back to the wing shortly I'm going to use hackle pliers on reflection I think I should have made this a little bit longer okay now that's the the body on and then I'm going to put on a bit of peacock pearl from the feather the, the stalk as a thorax can you see the nice color and the furry appendages on it the tip is always brittle so I take the tip out I'm just going to put a thorax so it's not going to be very much just one 
piece of quill and I just put it behind the wings like this I think I was on probably a little bit short on the body but it's okay you won't be able to see that okay I've gone behind and I'm coming up under in front when you do things like this you've always got to remember to leave room for the hackle which is going to go on in the front now to me a thorax on a fly is much better as I say all natural flies have a thorax and to me there's something magical about peacock curl okay now I'm going to put in the hackle it's from a saddle cape and it's when it was white I've dyed it blue done grayish sort of blue which is the color I'm looking for for this fly and um, fabulous fly to use on our local rivers during the early part of the season in fact right through the season a little quill that right okay I like to put it on as a figure of eight one that way long feather so it's a little bit of a fiddle um, one that way and one that way what I'm doing is I'm crossing over the stalk just to make it secure and now I'm bending this stalk back to ensure it doesn't pull out when I start to tie it like that and now that the stalk is back I'm going to trace it and cut it off there it is nip it off okay this is a long hackle so it's quite easy for me to handle it and I'm, I'm going now to wind over this thorax so the thorax isn't in view really it's just an under thorax but if you look at a natural fly you will see the thorax is like a big muscle and that's where the wings and the legs come from so it's uh, there we are and I'll just put that one there to secure it but giving it two ties just to hold it nip off the hackle Then I get my little tool. Just bear with me a second. I've got a little tool here that I use to push the hackles back. This is just a, a tube that we use for tube flies. I do the same with, um, I use various uh, little tools for this sort of job. Um, one is a cotton bud which I cut off and you'll see me using that. Okay, push them back, just tie, just draw them back like that, tie them down. And just to be safe, can put a half hitch on like this over the eye slide it down and it'll take those hackles back a bit and expose the head so that I can tie it down see that okay I'll tie things down 
shorten my silk form the head like that and I'll do a whip finish my usual whip finish bend over form a loop secure this top one and I just wind it around like this dubbing needle and I draw it up okay now I'm going to cut the silk varnish the head the eye the head of the hook and I'm going to then position the wings Give the varnish a shake. And when I put varnish on a small fly, I get my brush from my Sally Hansons and I just put it on like using the dubbing needle, I just touch it around like this. Try not to get some on the hackles. Now, the other little job I do is I will clear the eye and then I want to position those wings. Now I clear the eye, a bit of feather is as good as anything. Down through or up, doesn't matter, the bottle brush effect. And now these wings, and one good thing about the mallard wings, it's quite a strong fibre feather for, for, for a wing. It really is the only one I use now if I use a natural fibre wing. If I do wing cutters, I use different feathers. But I'm just using feathers like this. Right, so what I do now, I put a blob down in there. One touch. And I position the wings sort of where I want them. Can you see those wings? See the position of them? So, I've got the tail there. Can you see that body? Uh, sort of a maroony segmented body. Should have left a little bit longer winding it, but it's worked out okay. And the hackle is a blue dun cock hackle from a saddle cape, very good quality, it'll float well. I'll just have a closer look at it. That should be ideal. Some people clip under the hackle if they want to, or you can cut a little V in it if you want to, but really that's fine, that's a completed fly. And um, I thank you for staying with me and being patient through that uh, demonstration. Thanks for watching.